Okay, cool. So Apache is now running. Um, it is serving this basic website. So the next question is, well, how do we actually make it serve something more interesting than the default website? So there's two places you really need to worry about when you're dealing with Apache. <coughs> One is the config file, or there's actually a set of config files. That controls the Apache configuration. We're going to look at that first. It like basically tells it what to serve, how to serve it, all of that kind of jazz. Then there's the location we're actually serving. So there's a folder somewhere on our machine where any files in that folder are going to get served by Apache. Right now, there's just one file in there, and it's that it works file, right? Um, so, like we said, on Linux, most of the config files are under slash etc. So if you go to slash etc slash Apache 2, this is where all the config files for Apache are. We're not going to go through all of them. You can get online and look up the details. Um, the top level config files is Apache2.com. That's where you kind of change global settings. We're actually fine with the defaults there. What we're going to change is site specific settings. Apache is actually capable of hosting multiple websites per server. So, um, and it calls them virtual hosts. So if I had like andysailor.com and I had johnsmith.com, I could host them both on my Raspberry Pi and they'd just be two separate sites. Uh, and that's what gets configured through here. So you basically have one config file for each site. So andysailor.com has its own config file. johnsmith.com would have its own config file and they could both be served. If you connected my Raspberry Pi from andysailor.com, it would notice it to that website. If you came in from johnsmith.com, it would send you to the other website. We're not actually going to go into the details of doing multiple sites tonight, but just know they exist. Um, if you look in the sites enabled folder, so I'm going to ls, or actually I'm going to do sites available first. So sites available. You'll see in here there's actually two config files, one called default and one called default-ssl. The sites enabled folder has one config file for every website that you could potentially turn on. Um, so these are essentially all the websites you could serve. Now, just because they're in this file doesn't mean they're necessarily serving them right now. Um, for instance, we're only serving the default website right now. We're not serving the default-SSL. The way you tell what we're actually serving is if you look at the sites uh, enabled. So sites available has one config file for every website you could serve. Sites enabled only lists the sites that are actually turned on. And there's one site turned on right now, which if we look at sites enabled, you'll notice it says 000 slash default. So this actually is just what we call a symlink. So it's essentially just a shortcut that points back to this default file. We can actually, if you run ls-al, or if you even just run ls-l, you'll see that when we do the long output, this is actually pointing to the sites available slash default. So if you want to turn websites on and off in Apache, this is how you do it. If I deleted this file, this actually doesn't quite work because of some other settings, but in theory, if I deleted this 000 slash default file, or I essentially deleted this shortcut, it would then <coughs> shut down the main site. Now, if I wanted to add another website, or if I wanted to turn on this default SSL website, I would just create another link called 0001-default-SSL, and I would make it point to this config file, and I would turn on the second website. So basically, the difference of what's in your sites enabled folder is what's currently turned on. Sites available is everything you could turn on. Does that make sense? Um, we can go through the command. So there's a command called ln. You can read the man page. That's how you create these links. This naming convention can actually, there's nothing, you don't have to name it 000-default. This is just by convention. The reason we start with three numbers is Apache starts the sites in alphabetical order. So by starting with three numbers, we make it really easy for you to control which site gets started and what order the sites get started in when you boot up. So if we wanted the site to be started second, we'd call it 000-1, 002. Then by default, you just use the name of the website. So if I was hosting andysailor.com on here as well as default, I would call it 0001-andysailor.com or something. Uh, so you can name these whenever you want. It just starts them in alphabetical order, and we tend to use this convention because it makes it easy to both see what order they're going to start in and see what the name of the website is. Cool? So that's the default web page. Yes. Right? Well, but it this is the page. config file. So the default web page, well, we'll get there in a second. So the default web page, the HTML, is actually stored elsewhere. Oh. This is just the configuration. So let's actually open up this configuration because we'll take a look at it. So if I open this in Emacs, or again, a text editor of your choice, um, I can actually access it because this is a shortcut. I mean, I could do sites enabled 00-default, or I could do sites available default. 
they're the same file. The second one's just a shortcut. <coughs> so I'm going to open up this file. And you'll see here, uh, this is the default configuration file for an Apache website. So I'm not going to go through all of the config settings because you can look them up online. Uh, and there's many, many more that aren't even included in here. The basics of it are, it always starts with this virtual host type stanza. What this is telling it is this is one website. If this website had a name, so the star means no matter what you connect from, go ahead and serve up this website. If I only wanted you to serve this when you connected from andysailor.com, I would put like andysailor.com there or something like that. So if I had a DNS name, which none of you guys do, the DNS name would go here. The 80 is the default port, so you have ports on the internet, it's kind of how we control what traffic goes to what application. 80 is the default port for HTTP, so when you're browsing on the internet by default, you're always using port 80. So this is just saying use the default port. We could use a non-default port, but then when they typed in andysailor.com, they need to type in andysailor.com colon 80, or, else, or colon whatever port. If I was using port 90, they'd do andysailor.com colon 90. So when you don't specify a port like in your web browser, you end up with port 80, and that's the default. Uh, what if it just pulls up nothing? It probably means you typed in the file name wrong and it opened a new file. So the file name should be... Oh, yeah, I did. I spelled the default. Yeah. yeah. So when you guys are working on the command line, make liberal use of the autocomplete features in Linux. So you know, if I type this far and I hit tab, it's going to autocomplete as far as it can. And if I hit tab again, it'll give me all of my options. So if I then type in A, it'll autocomplete the rest. If I hit tab, it'll autocomplete to default. There's two options. One's just like this. So if you use tab, you just like pound on tab when you're typing things. It really reduces the likelihood of you making a typographic mistake. Let the computer do the work for you. Um, OK, so getting back to this. <coughs> so then we have a series of information in here. Like I said, I'm not going to go through all of this. The stuff that really matters is document root here. This is the directory that actually holds our website, that holds the HTML or the CSS or the PHP or whatever we're running on our website. So the default website is stored at slash bar slash www. This is where you by default store websites on Debian again. Um, if we had more than one website, you would actually normally put a slash here and then the name of the website. But because we only have one website, we're just using the www directly. So we're gonna, we'll go to this directory in a minute, and that's where we'll actually edit the website. But that's saying that this website's serving this folder. Uh, if you made this like your home folder right now, it would start serving up your home folder. Don't do that, because you probably don't want to make all of your home folder files available on the public internet. Uh, but it's whatever folder you have here is what it ends up serving. There's then some options. This is where you can do things like turn on and off indexes. We'll see what that means in a minute. Basically, if you, if you go to a folder name, it, this controls whether or not it loads a list of files in that folder or not. Um, you can also control access rights here. So this is where you say let people access this folder, not this folder, so on and so forth. You would also do things like if you wanted to turn on PHP and stuff like that, you would change those settings in here. Um, all kinds of stuff. If you look up online, you know, if you Google Apache, whatever you want to do, you'll find someone with the default config for what you have. So all we really care about is the fact that we're serving bar www. We're going to go over to that folder and take a look at it. We're not going to worry too much about the rest of these settings. You could if you wanted to. You're also setting up things like the name of your logs in here, so on and so forth. So basic questions on this config file. So this is the configuration for the default website. So as we saw, the, web, the folder it's actually serving is bar www. And in some ways, a web server is really just a file server. It basically takes a directory, and it makes all the files in that directory available on the internet. Now, your browser, by default, looks for files that end in HTML, and it renders them as web pages. But it's really the server's acting more as a file server than anything else. There's nothing necessarily magic about being a web server. Uh, it's your browser and the fact that you're using HTML that makes a lot of that magic happen. So if we go to that folder, so slash var slash uh, all caps. So right now we'll see there's one file in this folder called index.html. By default, just you can configure this in Apache as well, but if you go to the if the so the root of our website, if we just go to our IP address, it's gonna serve this folder. And by default, if we don't specify a file name, which we'll look at here in a sec, it's gonna serve us the index.html. You can configure that in Apache, index is pretty standard, but in the absence of asking for a specific file, index.html is the file it's going to give us. So if we look at this index.html file, 
Uh, you may need to be root to edit this. I think they're owned by, yeah, it's owned by root. So normally, if this were a real web server, you would change these users to be a specific user just for the web server. There's just some security reasons for doing that. We're not going to worry about it. But if we open up this file as root, uh, so we'll see this is the poorly formatted HTML for that basic website we're looking at. So we can start making changes here. Um, I don't know what people's HTML knowledge is like, but uh, if you want to learn a lot of HTML, we did a lecture a couple weeks back on HTML. You can find it on YouTube. Um, you can make like you know semi-intelligent changes, though. So I could just rename this Andy Sailor's website. And now I'm going to make a link. Go to my real website. So you can do whatever you want here. Uh, in order for it to be valid HTML, HTML is a markup language that's XML based. So you need to make sure you have tags that match. You'll notice this HTML tag gets closed by this slash HTML. This body corresponds to this slash body. This P corresponds to this slash P. This H1 corresponds to this slash H1. You can't just do whatever you want, but you know, as long as you kind of keep this syntax, the P is for paragraph, the H1 is for header. Body just means the main part of my website. So um, you know, if you more or less follow the syntax, you'll be OK. I want a link, so links in HTML start with an A for anchor, and then um, <laughs> thanks, sorry, I know that. <laughs> this is what happens when you've been writing HTML all day, and then you go talk for an hour. So I then need to close that. So if I make these changes and save my website, so I don't even need to close it, but as long as I save it, if I now go back to it, it should load all of my changes up. So we're serving my new changes. I can click on my link, and clearly I typed in my link wrong. So you need to specify full paths. Well, you don't need to do that. Uh, yes, you do. OK, so if I go back. So sometimes you will run into, refresh it, okay, so now it's working. Um, if it doesn't update right away, some browsers will cache old versions of the website. You can do things like clearing your cache, so on and so forth. It's not a web development class, so we're not going to dive too deep into it. But uh, we can now start writing code. We can write JavaScript in here, right? We could use PHP, although like I said, I don't think it's turned on by default. Um, you can even use things like Python, so on and so forth, that has ways to plug Python into Apache. Um, there's a bunch of different things you could do now. One of the things that's pretty straightforward is if we didn't want to just serve a website, sometimes you want to just like have a place where you can dump files for people to download. So if we set up another folder, so inside this var www, like we said, right now we just have this index because I used Emacs and I have this temporary file as well. Note, one of the things you should do if you're running a real web server is you would go into that config file and you'd tell Apache not to display temporary files like this. Because right now, if I wanted to get to the old version of my website, I could just type in that temporary <coughs> file name. And it now is going to load the old version. So again, this is like bush leak. You don't want to let stuff like this happen because maybe there was a reason I changed it. And I don't want to keep the old version online. Um, so one of the things you would do in that Apache config is you would say, don't serve anything that ends in a tilde or whatever text editor to use just to protect you in case you forget to delete it. Total tangent, though. If we go back and look at this folder. So what we want to do is we want to create a folder inside here that we're going to fill with files. And we're just going to go to that folder in Apache. It's going to list the files for us automatically because that's Apache's default behavior. So I can use make directory command. And I'm just going to call it files. Uh, except I need to be root. And then I'm going to copy something from my home folder. 
Is this what happens when I don't change the password, the default password on my device? Someone being clever and logging in, and creating files that I didn't put there. Um, I hope it has like you know a great love note or something. I'm going to be very disappointed. So um, <laughs> should call her on that. So we have this. There's this little image file that's in here by default. I'm just going to serve it for lack of something better. But you know any file you have access to, you can put in here. So I'm going to copy this OCR pi, and I'm going to copy it to var www that files folder we just created. Now, if I come up here, so like I said, if we don't specify any file, it loads index.html. But if I specify a file here or a folder, that's what it's going to load. So if I specify a folder, so we named that folder files, and if there were an index.html file inside that folder, it would load it. But in the absence of that, what it displays is just a list of all the, file, all the files in that folder. So the one file I copied in, this PNG file, if I click on it, it'll probably open it instead of downloading it because Chrome knows what to do with PNG files. This is kind of up to your browser. Um, so it's going to open it. If I wanted to download it, though, I could just right click and go to say link as, and it could download. I would download a copy of my file. It's a silly example, right? But if I had like a big zip file full of pictures that I didn't mind being online, but I didn't want to email someone, I could dump them in here and just send them to link link, right? If I did slash files, slash the name of this, they click on the download. When you guys download my images, this is essentially what I'm doing, right? So if you actually look on the foundation website, and if you go to the slash files, so these are all of the files on that server. These are the links I send you when you download things, so on and so forth. So Apache works as like a very basic file server in the, basic, in, in the absence of anything else. This is very basic, right? There's no real access control here. It's like public or nothing. It's not like I'm saying you have access to these three and you have access to these four. And you can't write them. It's just download, right? So it's not a real file server. Um, but it's doing basic file download serving. If I put in HTML files, it'll serve them. Your browser will render them. That's how you build little websites. So on and so forth. If you wanted to start to get dynamic, you would be using things like JavaScript or PHP. You could start to actually build programs instead of just static websites, which I think is what we're going to look at a little bit next week, kind of tie together some of the concepts from last week and some of this kind of stuff to have programs that update our websites. Um, so that pretty much brings us to the end of our time. We have 10 minutes left, so are there any questions? Okay, if there aren't any questions, you guys are welcome to either bring your equipment back up or play around. I can stick around for a little while. If you are going to bring your equipment back up, please do a few things for me. Try to put it back in your bag in the manner that you found it. That includes coiling the cables in a semi-intelligent manner, as opposed to just shoving them into the bag. It's pretty straightforward, and I trust everyone can figure it out. Also, if you'd be so kind to plug your monitor back in, and if you take the USB cable, the mouse, and keyboard, and plug it into the rear, so on the back of the machine where the Ethernet cable plugs in, if you plug it right underneath that all the way to the right, not all these USB ports work as I've been finding out, but that one does work on all of the machines. So it shouldn't really matter, but below the Ethernet jack all the way to the right, you'll satisfy the OCD part of me. Do you have a question, Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, how do you add authentication to like the files folder, for example? So you would, that's all done in that config file. So you'd go into that config file, you would basically, so you can specify for the whole site or on a per folder basis, and you could do things like turn, so there's different kinds of auth, right? You could turn on HTTP basic authentication, which is, you know, back in the 90s where it pops up a text box. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to do something fancier like Kerberos, so I mean, there's, you know, authentication protocols off the wazoo, you would need to add some extra code for that. Uh, Apache doesn't support it all by default, but uh, Digest and, and Basic are supported by default. You just need to turn those on. There's a lot of other, I, Kerberos, I think, there is a Kerberos module for Apache. Apache's pretty extensible. Then if you wanted something like OAuth, you would need to write your own little OAuth script that was dealing with it, and so on and so forth. Cool, but yeah, it's all in the config file. If you Google set up Apache authentication, you know, it'll be, the instructions will be out there. Any other questions? So this video will be online later, same time here next week. Um, and I'll stick around for a little while if people have questions. If you don't have questions, try to return things to the manner in which you found them. I do appreciate it. And bring your equipment back up here. Keep your SD card out of the bag. Just bring your SD cards up separately because I need to reflash them for the next week. Thank you very much.